on the Texas rig on the edge of the vegetation, guys. This is how you go from not knowing anything to catching fish right here. Folks, what's going on? Welcome to the Fishing Norm YouTube channel. Comment these popping up down below. So make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and the bell. Leave a comment down below on this video for your chance to be next video's comment of the day. You guys have been going crazy on that subscribe button, so guys, thank you so much. Keep on hitting that subscribe button for me, please. But today, guys, we are switching the videos up. For those of you guys who are new to the Fishing Norm YouTube channel, it's your first time clicking on the video. Normally, I do fishing vlogs and fishing challenges where we go out and we try to catch fish in weird and fun ways. So for those of you guys who stumbled upon this video, this is perfect for you guys. I wish this video existed when I first got into bass fishing and the goal for today I know it's gonna be a scouted video but my goal is from start to finish to teach you guys everything you need to know to go catch your first fish and for those of you guys who are already more experienced fishermen I'm sure you guys are gonna learn something along the way too <laughs> I'm not a professional fisherman by any means but guys I've learned a few things over the few years I've been doing fishing YouTube so I decided we're gonna share everything with you guys today everything you need to know about fishing as much as I can in this video, you guys clicked on the right one, congratulations. Also guys, if you have any questions I do not cover in this video, leave them down below. I'll do my best to get to them. And if I don't get to them, anybody else in the comment sections, let's start a conversation in the comment section down below about fishing. Everybody help each other out on how to catch more fish. Cause at the end of the day, that's kind of my goal with this YouTube channel is to entertain you guys and spread the sport of fishing to everybody that I can. Also guys, make sure to go ahead and like this video for the YouTube algorithm to teach more people how to fish. That's my goal with this channel is to teach as many people possible how much fun fishing actually is and to get more people into the sport. But the number one most important thing you guys can learn out of this video is to go fishing more. I can't tell you guys how much you'll learn on the water without even knowing you're learning just by going out and fishing. That's the number one way to become the best angler that you can and also having other friends to go out with and you can learn stuff from each other. That's how the first year of fishing went for me. I learned 99% of what I learned just from going out and fishing, doing it myself and learning from my friends. So guys, I think the actual first step would be to explain to you guys where these bass are, you know, where to catch past certain times of the year to increase your chances of actually catching a bass. So we'll go ahead and start with winter guys. Winter the water is super cold and in the winter the water is coldest on the top and hottest on the bottom and a lot of times those bass in the winter will be in the deepest part of your ponds and lakes hanging out around structure. They don't really want to move because it's super cold so a lot of times the best lures to be throwing would be like a slow moving bait whether that's a worm or whether that's you know slow rolling a swim bait something of that sort. Normally smaller and slower in the winter is the best way to go in the deepest water with structure that you guys can find. Moving on to spring, there's three different types of spring. There's pre-spawn, spawn, and uh, post-spawn. And the pre-spawn and spawn, I'll throw moving baits like uh, flukes, chatter baits, rattle traps, all that stuff. And the spawn, it's more of a sight fishing thing where those bass are guarding their eggs. And in my opinion, the best thing to throw on a bed would just be a simple Texas rig, but you can really throw anything on them. But yeah, guys, in the spring, expect fish to be moving from deep water up to shallow water. That's the main transition in the pre-spawn and then post-spawn they'll start going back out deep that's the end of spring going into summer and the summer guys the water is super hot which means there's not as much oxygen as the water as other times of the year so a lot of times these bats will go back out deep because because at this point in the summer the hottest water is at the top the coldest water is at the bottom and in the summer when it's super hot the bass want to hang out in the colder water around vegetation. Basically, any time of year, the best thing to look for, guys, is structure bass are very structure-oriented fish, but especially in the summer, I find them hanging out in vegetation the most, whether that's hydrilla, lily pads, stuff like that. And the best thing I think to throw in the summer, you can mix it up with frogs, moving baits, all that stuff, but I really like to throw a big curly tail worm in the summer. Summer probably being my least favorite time of year to fish, but moving on to fall, guys. Fall is absolutely awesome. Fall fishing is basically based around shad or shiners whatever bait fish you guys have fall is the time of year where you can get on some schooling fish like absolutely crazy guys and i love throwing rattle traps chatter baits any type of moving bait in the fall especially big swim baits the best time to throw big swim baits would be in the spring and in the fall i love throwing big swim baits in the fall fall is up there probably my favorite season just when you start getting consistent colder nights after the summer that's when you kind of know fall has happened doesn't necessarily have to be on the calendar but just when those nights start getting colder and the days are noticeable colder. So guys, now that you know where to cast during these times of years, winter being deep, spring being shallow, summer being deep, fall being shallow. Now I'm going to show you guys the two main types of rods and reels used for bass fishing, which would be a spinning combo and also a bait caster and why you would use each. So guys, on my left hand here, this is a spinning rod and reel. This is a terrible example. This was from a flea market fishing challenge I did 
and uh, this is <laughs> this is an awful example of a spinning combo, but here it is. And then I have a bait caster rod and reel combo right here. So why would you need one of each of these things? So guys, starting with the bait caster rod and reel combo, why would you ever use a bait caster, guys? I would say this is probably more popular than spinning when it comes to bass fishing. A bait caster is really good for just about everything. It casts more accurately than a spinning combo. It's really good for every single lure besides like lures that are super light and hard to cast. That's where the spinning combo comes in. But bait casters are super accurate, definitely harder to cast than a spinning combo. It takes a lot of learning to do. I would say normally if you see somebody out on a boat bass fishing, they'll have like 10 or eight bait casters compared to their like one spinning combo that's laying on the deck. But these things are good for throwing just about everything besides super small, finesse stuff, that's when I would switch to a spinning combo. Now what's really nice about a spinning combo, like I was saying guys, is for that super finesse type fishing, whether you're throwing like a tiny little Ned rig, any type of little finesse worm, finesse, you know, swim bait, something like that. That's when I would switch it up to a spinning combo. You would never see me throwing a topwater frog or really any topwater on a spinning combo besides maybe like a small popper. Uh, really wouldn't throw any moving baits on a spinning combo, even though you could do all of these things on it. I just prefer the bait caster over that. But a really confusing thing when I started fishing is everybody was saying like, seven foot medium heavy this and it has a six three to one gear ratio so what does all that stuff mean guys so when it comes to the gear ratio you'll have like a five five to one a six three to one a eight one to one uh, basically all you guys need to know for that is that the higher the first number is the faster the reel is going to reel in the lure so this reel right here is a seven three to one I'd say that's pretty average you would need something faster for let's say frog fishing or flipping when you're trying to get the fish in as quick as possible out of some heavy cover I like to go higher gear ratios on techniques like that and then I'll even go slower when you're trying to like slow drag a worm on the bottom or something like that that's when we'll go down to like a six three to one is what I like to do but my number one rule of thumb is that you can always reel slow but you can't necessarily reel like really 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 fast so if you guys are only gonna buy one rod and reel I would recommend going with like a 731 or higher and then you can always slow down if you need to also when it comes to the rod guys this one's a 7.3 that means it's seven foot three inches so if somebody says six eight that's six foot eight inches so guys next is what type of line should you be using basically all you need to know is that there's three different types of fishing line monofilament or monofluorocarbon or fluoro and then braid guys braid a monofilament float on top of the water while fluorocarbon sinks so guys starting with braid braid like does not stretch at all and it also floats on top of the water which makes it perfect for frog fishing and also flipping really the only two things i use braid for would be that moving on to monofilament guys the only thing i use mono for would be top waters with treble hooks on them so that would be a popper a walking bait uh, a whopper plopper anything like that that's the only thing i use monofilament for and i maybe have one rod with mono on it right now and then moving on to my favorite guys is fluorocarbon and fluorocarbon in my opinion is absolutely the best for every other lure you're going to be using fishing whether that's a texas rig any type of moving bait a rattle trap a chatter bait basically all the main stuff fluorocarbon is the way to go and depending on what cover i'm fishing i'll go from like 14 to 17 pound fluorocarbon if i go to a big swim bait i'll go to 20 pound fluorocarbon and that's basically all i mess with so now that you guys have learned where the fish are each time of year you guys have also learned what type of fishing rods and reels to use what the action all that stuff means and you guys have also learned what type of fishing line to use I figure what we're gonna do now is go inside of Walmart I'm gonna show you guys what type of fishing lures to use whether you're a beginner whether you're advanced and what times of years you guys should be throwing my favorite fishing lures all right guys we are here in the Walmart fishing section I'm gonna keep it limited to like my favorite five fishing lures for like all times of year for you guys to try out so number one so guys for 492 for a fishing lure that is extremely easy to use especially for beginners this silver one right here represents a shad but depending on the colors you get guys match the hatch with whatever type of bait fish you guys have in ponds and lakes around you but they could also represent like shiners or bluegill perch whatever you guys got in your water but these things are absolutely perfect especially for beginner fishermen because they have two treble hooks on them so half the time when you go to set the hook you might accidentally catch them anyways because rattle traps do a really good job of hooking the fish whereas fishing like a worm or something like that you guys might have to detect whether the fish is biting or not so whenever I have somebody who's brand new fishing in my boat I make sure to give them a rattle trap to kind of get used to the bite I guess and and normally if you can get this thing through the water it is going 
to work. Rattle trap would be like my number one all favorite if you guys can only get one. Try the uh, rattle trap in for four bucks. I mean, pretty easy. Next up on the list, guys, is the all reliable. This takes a little bit more talent, I would say, fishing a worm just because you have to know kind of where to throw and detect the bites, whether it's, you know, grass or a log you're hitting or a dock or if it's actually a fish. So I don't think they have my favorite worm, guys, which would be like a speed worm, which is basically a worm with a little tail. That way you could swim it back to the boat. You could use it as a moving bait. You could swim it on top water or you could hop it. But my second favorite would definitely be the uh, the trick worm. Just a rule of thumb is if you guys are fishing dirty water, go with June bug, which is like a dark color. And if the water is more clear, more natural, that's when you go with the more natural colors like the green. So lure number three, guys, one of like my new favorites would be a, uh, a chatterbait. So with the chatterbait, you're gonna need, you guys are gonna need the chatterbait and also you're gonna need a trailer, which is where things can get tricky. You could even put like a little worm on the back as a trailer or you go with a paddle tail swim bait. I normally don't do that because it takes away from the action. What I like is like a really, really, really small like fluke. So something just like this would be perfect guys right here. The white flukes matches the white chatterbait. So we'll go ahead and get both of these. So guys, when it comes to fishing lures, there's basically three different categories you could put them in. One is top water, which means the lure is gonna be moving on top of the water. One is a moving bait, which is what I consider something that goes through the middle of the water column. And one would be a bottom bait, which would be something you would hop up and down off the bottom. That would be like a jig or Texas rigged worm. The moving baits would be like rattle traps and chatter baits. Top water, obviously like frogs, walking baits, poppers, things of that nature. So it is important to have a couple lures in each water column depending on the day because sometimes fish will only be hitting top water sometimes fish will only be eating on the bottom lure number four guys would be a top water popper and these ones right here they're walmart brand for only a dollar 97 and this would be the one lure i would ever throw on a monofilament would be this little guy right here and you could throw this on a bait caster or a spinning rod and reel combo it doesn't really matter but this is perfect for pretty much every single time of year besides like the dead of cold winter you guys will get bites on this i normally throw it in shallow water kind of right on the edge of the bank and guys for lure number five i feel like you guys are pretty much good lures one through four but if you wanted to add a fifth one on uh frog fishing is just probably i think it's pretty common to say that everybody's favorite way to fish for bass would be topwater fishing and frog fishing is normally everybody's favorite where it might not be my favorite way to fish i know as most bass anglers their favorite way to fish would be with a topwater frog and what i like to do guys is on overcast days where it's really cloudy i'll go with a black frog and then days where it's sunny outside I will go with a white frog and remember to look at the bottom of the frogs and not the top because the bass can only see the bottom as it's going above them so one last thing you guys need to know for frog fishing this is one of the harder ways to go bass fishing this is definitely not like a beginner fishing tactic so what I recommend guys is all is make sure you have brave when you're throwing a frog so you can avoid heartbreak also a heavy action rod I like 7.3 heavy with a fast tip that way the tip moves really fast and you can work your frog very well and then that heavy to get them out of the cover. That's very, very important. I missed like a hundred frogfish before I finally learned that tip. Once I figured out that it was all about the combo, I started hooking so many frogfish, but we'll add this to the cart. And I think we have everything we need. And for those of you guys who made it this far into the video, I'm gonna be giving away every single lure I just picked out to one of you guys who's just starting out fishing. So you guys, make sure you drop a comment down below with any helpful fishing tips you guys have. Also make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel and hit the bell and leave a like on this video. You guys are now entered to win the starting fishing kit right here. All right guys, so we are here at the pond and this is the section of the video where I teach you guys how to rig up your fishing lures on your rod and reel of choice. So I have the bait caster, which I love for tech Texas rigs. Uh, when I go weightless, that's when I switch to the spinning combo. But we have 17 pound fluorocarbon here on my rod and reel combo. First thing for a Texas rig you guys need is a bullet weight. I got a little 3 16 ounce. I find that's pretty much perfect for any type of pond fishing. 3 16 is pretty much the way to go. So we put so we put this on the line. Front of the bullet weight goes first, like so. And you can let that drop and hang wherever you want to. And next up comes the hook. And this is, geez. <laughs> We got trucks driving everywhere. This is the part of the video where I would say, go look up a tutorial on how to tie different knots. I tie the double clinch knot, and I know a lot of people tie the polymer, other types of knots. It's hard for me to show you guys, but basically all you do is you bring the line through one on the hook, just like this, and then you make another loop, come back through the hook the same way until you have a circle just like this in your line right here. And then with your tag line, you wrap it around the main line. I do about six or seven times. Then you bring it through the two circles once again, pull it tight, boom, you're done. Pretty simple, <laughs> pretty simple knot. Never had any problems with it. And I mean, that is good 
to go. And guys, you can tie that same knot on any other type of lure. I figured that the Texas rig is probably the most complicated. When you're rigging on a worm, what I like to do is get the worm, bring it all the way to where this hook bends right here, and then at a 90 degree angle, push the hook out of the worm just like this, and you push it all the way to the top of the hook just like so. And then, this is the part that is tough for some people. You bring your worm straight just like this, and you see right here where the hook would go into the worm, I'll put my thumb right there like that, and then I'll put the hook right through where my thumb is at, and that will guarantee every single time a perfect straight Texas rig. And then what you do guys with the point of this hook that's sticking out, you pull the worm forward just slightly like this, put the tip of the hook in, and get it back. And that way when a fish bites, it'll be way easier for the hook to penetrate the fish's mouth, whether if you just had your hook all the way in the worm. But this is basically the perfect Texas rig. This is a fish catching machine. And now we're gonna head to the pond and we're gonna tell you guys what you should be looking at when you're casting. Like, what is the best place to start casting and where should you cast like last? All right guys, so we are out here at the pond and first thing you need to know before you even cast a bait caster is there's two different settings. First, you're gonna go ahead and uh, set the brakes right here. I have mine on five, it's right in the middle. If you guys are brand new, you're gonna turn it all the way up to the max. If you guys are experienced, that's when you start turning it down to minimum. That's gonna allow you to cast it further. Right here guys, you have the spool tension knob and what I like to do is have my fishing lure, you have to change this every single time when you tie on a different lure, is have my lure fall half the speed of gravity. Thumb is not on it, lure's not following at all, so we're gonna loosen it up a little bit until it starts falling, and maybe you tighten it down one more. Kind of falling half the speed of gravity, that's perfect guys, and now we are, uh, we're we're ready to cast. So, before I even cast, <laughs> so before I even cast, that's funny. I'm looking around here, I see a lot of vegetation, which is perfect. Uh, bass love structure all times of year, so that could be uh, grass, that could be logs, that could be rocks, that could be docks. Just remember guys, wherever the structure is, that's gonna be the place you wanna cast. And also on top of that, I always look for places where water flows into ponds, because a lot of times that'll bring like grasshoppers and frogs, other types of bait that those bass like to eat on. Last thing, shade. Shade is absolutely huge. So if you can find a combination of like multiple different types of structure and shade, that is perfect. So right now we got shade because it's overcast everywhere. And we have vegetation right here, so I'm gonna go ahead and make a cast. Another tip guys, is when you go to set the hook, on a Texas rig you want to go straight up, whereas like a rattle trap, anything with treble hooks, you want to go to the side, and also uh, a chatterbait, you go with a sideways hook set, and with a Texas rig you want to go all the way up. Oh my gosh! Oh dude, it's a nice one, it's a nice one! Guys, on the, <laughs> on the Texas rig, on the edge of the vegetation guys, this is how you go from not knowing anything, to catching fish right here. Oh my gosh, that's a good one too. He's super strong. I don't know if I can flip him. <laughs> Holy cow. Now that is a thick hippo if I've ever seen one, folks. Look at that. Straight up on the hook set, top of the mouth, just how you want it. Boom. There we go, guys. Awesome fish. Guys, that is how you catch your first ever bass right there. Also, Yak Pack's been holding the camera. Thank you, Yak Pack, very much. We're gonna go ahead and give her the uh, the good old release. Man, I really want you guys to go out and catch your first fish because I promise you, once you do, you're never gonna wanna stop. So, we're gonna go ahead and give her the proper release. All right, big girl, we'll see ya. <laughs> so guys, that is gonna do it for today's video. I really hope you guys I uh, learned something along the way. I've just been wanting to make this video forever because when I started fishing, there wasn't a video out there that taught me, you know, from start from starting with absolutely nothing to getting to actually catching a fish. So I hope this helps some of you guys out on your fishing journey. If it did, guys, go ahead, leave a like, drop comments down below, helping everybody with your fishing tips or asking questions to learn more about fishing. And yeah, last thing, I figure that you guys probably want to know like my favorite bait caster, like rod and reel combos and stuff like that because I forgot to mention that. And I really do like, and guys, I'm partnered with uh, with Lou, so obviously the reason I chose them is because I absolutely love their gear. And recently, they came out with this new Xfinity stuff. It's exclusive at Walmart. It's absolutely crazy, like super affordable. And I think it's like the cheapest amount of money that you could spend on a rod and reel combo, whether that's baitcaster or spinning, and the best quality is gonna last. So those would be my suggestions, guys, but obviously, go with whatever you guys wanna go with. But uh, yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe, hit the bell, and until the next fishing adventure, Fish Bump, I'm out of here.